I would like to ask you to join me one more time in considering politics. And today, the king's heart. 1 Peter chapter 2. Please open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 13. The king's heart. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. If you're using one of our red Bibles in the pew rack in front of you, it's page 1888. I found myself drawn to this little book of First Peter time and again in this series. Peter has so much to say about politics. But before we read our passage from First Peter, look at this proverb with me. This is so precious. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. Let me put this in Texas vernacular. The king's heart is like a water hose. He directs it wherever he pleases. Think about that for a minute. Presidents and potentates, premiers and elected offices, executives, despots, dictators, good and bad, all through history, their hearts in God's hand. Of all the messages that I've chosen to talk about in terms of politics, I think this morning's message is perhaps the most confusing and perhaps the most easily misunderstood. So I almost want to give you a pretest and a post-test. I almost want to ask you three questions before and three questions at the end and see just not how well I preached but how well you understood what I hoped I said. We'll see how we end up. So I'm going to begin with a disclaimer. I am not talking about our current administration this morning, except that President Trump happens to be in office. It is no accident that I asked my good friend, whose name I now remember and will never forget again, <laughs> Byron McAllister, to pray for our president. I did that intentionally. We are instructed more than once in scriptures to pray for the king. This message would not change if President Hillary Clinton were in office or Barack Obama, or John McCain, or Lincoln, or Van Bruen, or anyone else. Eight Roman Caesars, give or take, ruled during New Testament times. You wouldn't want your daughter to have married any of the eight, even though they were emperor of the known world. They were not nice men. Of those eight, best we can tell, Nero was emperor when Peter wrote our home passage. You're going to hear Peter speak directly as to what the Christian's attitude ought to be towards Emperor Nero. When you hear him speak, about the Christian's attitude about Emperor Nero, you need to keep this in the back of your mind. Peter will be executed under the reign of Emperor Nero. 
Nero will take his head. Now, I would like to think it was this great and grand confrontation, and Peter stood before Nero and preached some mighty sermon, but let's just face it. Nero killed so many Christians. So many died at his hands. I imagine Peter was just one of hundreds to Nero. Remember that. Remember that as we read our passage, 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 12. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who were sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorance talk of foolish men. Live as free men. But do not use your freedom as a covering up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the King. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us find our place in American culture as good, honest, Christian citizens. And help us as we pray for our government. In Jesus' name, amen. I have three principles for you this morning. The first one's the easiest to preach about. It's the simplest. It's so clear. It's so black and white. God says Respect the king. I mean, it's just here. It's not only here. Paul preaches about it in Romans. It's like these two guys sat down and compared notes. It's so easy. Submit at every level. Submit for the Lord's sake to every authority. So that means the king. That means the governor. That means the police. That means your principal at school. That means your school teacher. That means, that means all of them. Respect the king. It doesn't matter if you like the king or not. It doesn't even matter if it's a good king or not. Respect is due to the king. Remember... What's the emperor's name? What's Caesar's name? Nero. Nero lit the garden of his palace with the burning bodies of Christians. And Peter says, Submit yourselves to every authority. Do so for Christ's sake. This is so cool. For Christ's sake, not for their sake. Not because they're king. Not because they said so, because he said so. Jesus said, respect the king. So we do so. We respect President Trump, President Obama, President Bush, President Clinton, President whoever is next. We just do that because that is our Christian responsibility to respect the king. We do that. We do that under him for the Lord's sake. That means that there are boundaries, right? I mean, there are times when we say yes, sir, and there are times when we say no, sir, because if the Lord said no and the king says yes, we say no. It's for the Lord's sake. There are boundaries to our respect and obedience. But within those boundaries, we say, yes, sir. Verse 15, do good and silence slander. 
Have you ever known a time in your life when, basically speaking, in public opinion, Christians have been put in a worse light? When bashing Christians has been more popular? You know how Peter says, fix that? Just be the very best people you can possibly be. Be kind and considerate. Be compassionate and generous. Be caring and involved in your community so that people who would say those hypocritical Christians are so selfish, care only about themselves, will be silenced when they see your good behavior. We should be model citizens who are so civic-minded in terms of being deeply, deeply committed to our communities that when people think of us, they say, I don't know about the rest of the Christians, but this particular person, man, I want what they've got. They are fine, fine people. Do good. Silence, slander. And live free. Live as free men. You know that maybe a third or more of the population of the Roman Empire were slaves. Paul, Peter says, even if you're a slave, you, you're free. Not from laws. You're free from evil. See, you're free to make good choices. Most people are slaves to sin. See, they're, they're so caught up in, in their natural desires that they can't help themselves. They're just naturally evil. When they have a choice between lying and telling the truth, they tell a lie. When they're faced with the opportunity to, 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 to use drugs or alcohol, well, they're addicted. They're slaves to alcohol and drugs. But you're not. You're free. They're slaves to their passions. When they're tempted to do something immoral, they just follow their flesh. But not you. You're a believer. You serve God. You can live as a free person. You're free to make good choices. Be a free person. Live as free men. And show respect. To everyone. Civility. Politeness. Act nice. Especially to the church, the brotherhood. But not just the brotherhood. But respect everyone. Verse 17. Fear God. And honor the king. God says, respect the king. Easy. Number two, God's men criticize the king. The whole Old Testament, prophet after prophet after prophet, is godly men not respecting the king, but criticizing the king. The prophet Elijah, when King Ahab saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals, the false gods. The Bible is full of godly people criticizing the king. And sometimes... They got thrown in jail for it, and they did it anyway. Christians have a responsibility to speak out against evil, even when it's the king. A responsibility to do so. Christian men criticized the king. John the Baptist John the Baptist had been saying to Herod the king, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. King Herod had married his brother's wife, Herodias. 
John the Baptist calls him out on this incest, on this immorality. So, King Herod had him put in jail. The woman, Herodias, manipulated things in one of the most macabre scenes in all of the New Testament, eventually had her daughter demand and receive the head of John the Baptist on a platter, okay? That's what this criticism cost John the Baptist. John the Baptist calls the king out. It cost him his head. God's men criticized the king. Jesus says about this same ruler... Go tell that fox, he was not calling him handsome. He was not calling him crafty. He was calling him an animal. Go tell that fox. See, someone had warned Jesus, you need to leave this place. King Herod's trying to kill you. Jesus says, go tell that fox, I drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and the third day I will reach my goal. What's Jesus saying? Yeah, I'll see Herod. I'll see Herod in Jerusalem. I'll see him there. And I'll die. But I'll win. Godly men criticize the king. We have a responsibility to speak out against evil, even when it's the king. Are we confused yet? Respect the king. Criticize the king. Wait. It gets worse. God uses bad kings. Old Testament. The prophet says, God says, now I will hand all your countries, this is Israel, over to my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animal subject to him. Who is God's servant? Nebuchadnezzar. Never Was there a crueler, more wicked, godless king than Nebuchadnezzar? Except perhaps Cyrus. Except perhaps Cyrus the Great. Next slide, please. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue the nations before him and to strip the kings of their armor to open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. God appoints Cyrus, king of Persia, to conquer Palestine. God uses Bad kings. Now, I know where your mind is going. If it hasn't, it will in a minute. Is Pastor Steve saying that Donald Trump is a bad king? No president, or at least very few, is all good or all bad. God uses them all. There are water hose in his hand. Sometimes he uses them to bless, and sometimes he uses them to punish because he is God. And he is in charge. Respect the king. Criticize the king. Sometimes God uses bad kings. It's kind of a puzzling picture, isn't it? Go ahead and put the three up there. 
So we're going to have our invitation to go home, all right? Are you comfortable? We'll just live with the tension. No, we won't. What are we to do? We are to be good Christian citizens. Forget how history is being written or rewritten about the American Revolution. Forget what's said about the founding fathers, whether they were Christians or deists or whatever. Just take this to the bank. There were some really godly men in the founding of our nation. Not all of them, but some of them, okay? You're on good, solid ground, biblically, if not historically, when you decide to be a good Christian citizen. You're okay when you decide to do that. Be respectful and do good. How can you go wrong? When you speak with respect about every single elected official, be respectful and do good. Second, speak out for the right. Do so. Humbly, but clearly. Speak out against immorality and greed, corruption, oppression of the poor and the helpless, godlessness. Speak out. By the way, it helps if you've been doing good when you speak out. Expect trouble. If Elijah got in trouble, had to run for his life, if Jeremiah ended up thrown into a, into a cistern, into a pit, if a lot of the prophets simply died, John the Baptist lost his head, expect trouble. And last of all, remember that God is in control. It's his country. It's not just his country. So is Iran and North Korea. Isn't that encouraging to know? North Korea is God's country. He owns it. China, Cuba, Sudan, France, God, he is still Lord. I don't know what the heck's going on. I I really don't. I don't need to know. I know who does. Let's stand.